So if you are new to bra sewing, okay, and you've been making all these beautiful cuffs with all those beautiful round seams, but you can't seem to get it flat enough because you don't have the proper tools for pressing. And when you go to iron it, you end up creating a crease somewhere else. Well, today we're going to solve that problem, okay, with the use of what is called a tailor's ham. Yes. So this specific one is round. It's the half, it's the half ball, right? It's used for curved items, right? So things where we have those curved seams, like our shoulder uh, seams, necklines, and things like this. But this one works especially well with bra making because it allows us to put those cups after we make those beautiful stitches right on here and press it with the iron, right? So that's what this is all about. Sometimes this is called seam press, bust seam press or bust ham, but it's a tailor's ham and this is just the round variety, okay? Perfect for upcyclers, people who have scraps hanging around the house and want to make something useful out of them. So let's begin. Let's jump right into this tutorial. What I want to do is show you first all of the supplies that you need so that you can run and get that and sew along with me, okay? And then let me know in the chat how things are going as you are sewing with me. I hope that you do take me up on that offer. Okay, so there's my old faithful right there, okay? So the things that you will need are um, a couple pieces of paper to trace out or draw out your pattern pieces, okay? So we will be doing that. You'll need your fabric scissors, you'll need paper scissors. And I always have these handy because I just choose, I love to use that to snip threads, but you don't have to have that. You need a, a protractor or some way that you can make a perfect circle, okay? You need a pencil, you need your ruler and a curve, of course your pins, okay? And then the fabric that I'm, I've chosen to work with is cotton. And the reason I've chosen cotton, you know, just your woven cotton, because it can take really high temperatures and you really wanna choose a fabric that can take high temperatures like this, okay? So you need five squares that are um, about six by six inches to get the pieces that you're, we're going to work on today. I, as you can see, I've pre-cut mine in the interest of time and because this other layer here is a bit messy when you're cutting it, okay? And so this one has a nice little pile on it. You can see that, right? So I love that. So that takes a lot of heat, okay? So, and then the other thing that you will need is whatever you're going to stuff it with, okay? So that could be old scraps of fabric, cat litter, saw particles, small ball bearings, many things, beans, rice, um, whatever your choice of uh, material is, make use of it, okay? If you have something that's just hanging around the house that you you know you have no good use for, this is a perfect um, project for that, okay? All right, so for your pattern pieces, you need just two uh, pieces of paper, even just paper from your printer is totally fine. We're gonna draw two pieces, okay? And you're gonna also need your ruler and your curve for this and your pencil, all right? So the first piece that we're going to make is the the pieces that make up the circle the side walls and the top here okay. so what we're going to do is draw a line on your paper that measures about four inches okay All right so horizontal line about four inches and then in the center of that let me mark my center point at the two inch mark i'm going to mark and then I'm going to draw a line up from there that is about four and a half inches tall, okay? Making sure to square it here at the bottom. Make sure that I'm good and centered, All right? Making sure to square it on the line here, okay? So my, I'm going to draw that to be about four and a half inches, like so. All right? And then we're going to simply connect the lines to draw a triangle. Okay, and we're going to do the same on this side. Okay, so now you should have a triangle, right? In order for it to be a rounded top, what we have to do is round out each of the sides, okay? And we're going to do that by using the curve. And I've gone ahead and actually I've marked on here on mine where I want to start and end the curve. And you might want to do this yourself as well so that both sides end up being equal or you can make it draw it on the half, okay? Meaning that make this on the fold or something, okay? Um, but I'm gonna do it this way. Okay. And I'm taking care, because I have my mark here, I'm just taking care to make it nice and even on both sides. Okay, very cool. And then now I'm gonna do the same down here. I'm gonna curve it out down here as well. Okay, very cool. So we've got our first piece drafted. All right, so now we're going to draft the piece for the bottom. Okay, so that flat rounded side there. All right, so what you're going to do first is, and I've taken two because my paper is small and I want to make sure that I don't run out of space as I'm making the circle. So I've identified the center of my, of my piece of paper. You don't have to do that if your piece is large enough, okay? 
Um, so now I'm going to draw a line that is two and a half inches from that dot, okay? And I'm gonna use the side here just to make sure it's nice and even like on the side here. All right, helps me keep my line straight. All right, so from here to here is two and a half inches. So I'm just gonna draw a line two and a half inches from there like that. Okay, so just like that, just connecting it. All right, so now what you're going to do is take a protractor, okay? And we're going to use it to draw a circle that is a radius of two and a half inches, okay? And I've already dialed it in here. So this is the point. I'm going to line the point up with that and then um, draw my circle. Okay, very good. All right, so circle is now complete, just that simple. Okay, so now we have our pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut those out. Okay, now just as a reminder, in cutting these out, again, I'm using my paper scissors, not my fabric shears. Okay, cut this out, be a nice, beautiful circle. Now, what I'm going to tell you is that these pieces do not have seam allowances, okay? So when you're cutting out your fabric, you're gonna cut out a seam allowance. Um, whichever is most comfortable to you, I'm going to use about a three eighths of an inch seam allowance so that it's not too much fabric being used. So three eighths of an inch is what I'm going to use. And I'm going to cut out my little triangle piece here. Okay. So when you're cutting out your fabric, you're going to cut an even seam allowance around the perimeter, okay? And as I mentioned, in the interest of time, what I've done is I've gone ahead and cut it out because one of my fabric choices is a bit messy, okay? So, and you can see here <laughs> that it is rubbing off, right? Okay. So what I want to do, so I have two layers that we're going to make for this, right? So we're going to have an inside layer, which is what this is about. So this is a thin, like a broadcloth fabric and then my outer layer is has a little bit more plushness to it okay yours doesn't have to this is just what I had so um but what I will say is just to make sure that you're using fabrics that can withstand a lot of heat and that would be most often your cotton fabrics that way you're not restricted in terms of dialing up the heat if you need to do that okay in the pre in a uh, process of pressing something now for, for bra making it's very unlikely that you will be pressing at the highest temperature because your fabrics will be you know, blends, nylons, things like that. So you don't want to, and things that have lycra and things like that. So those fabrics, those things will melt at high temperatures. So you want to make sure that you are, you know, keeping with the temperature that the fabric can withstand. But in the event you have to, you um, need to use it for something that's cotton, I would say use a fabric that can withstand that temperature. So let me just show you here. So what you're going to do is we're going to cut four of your inner layer. Okay. So you can see this four of the inner layer. So I've cut out four of those and one of the circle for the inner layer, all right? You're gonna do the same thing for your outer layer. So I've got one of those, one of those, and four, and four of these, okay? So once you have that all cut out, you're ready to start sewing. So what you wanna do is set your machine to a straight stitch. All right, so now what we're going to do, the first thing, okay? We're gonna separate these into two. So right sides together. And of course, these don't have a right and a wrong side. Um, and I'm gonna do that for this too. Now this one has a little bit more of a plush side and I've already got it right sides together. All right, so right sides together, what we're going to do is stitch down one side of the triangle, okay? On all four pieces. Right. And now the next thing that we're going to do is so that our curves are nice and flat, we're going to clip the curve here. Okay. All of the pieces. So you do need your iron, okay, because to press the seams open, unless you have a fabric that you can get away with finger pressing and it flat. I'm going to finger press here where I can right now. The size of the outer fabric as well. This is a super easy project that can take you, what, 20 minutes? All 
All right, so I'm just going to, at this point, finger press this open, okay? That works well for this layer. But if your fabric doesn't um, stay flat, then you will want to iron that open, okay? That seems to work okay here. And once again, this is the inside. So this will be kind of your lining layer, okay? So now what I'm going to do, now that I've finger pressed these seams open, I'm going to pin them so that um, the seam allowances are aligned. Now, if you need some reference for the, for the pattern piece, this is the how the, this is the orientation, okay? All right, so we're going to pin these together like so, just make sure. And then we're going to stitch along this edge here. See how that's looking actually like a cup piece? It's like a lower cup, to be quite honest with you. Actually, I'm going to press this with the iron. And press them open. All right, so now what we're going to do is right sides together once again sides together. So I'm going to align those seams. Okay. All right. And once again, we are going to stitch around here. Flat for you so they can take a look at it. Okay, so my seams are going vertical. I'm going to stitch around the curve here just and, and do the same with So now we're going to clip around this curve. And this is just so that our curves flip out nice and smooth. And these pressing tools are awesome, even if you don't sew. All right, so now that we've done that, okay, what we're going to do is flip it so that it's right side out. So now we flip it right side out. We're gonna take, we're gonna take our round piece So once again, it's right sides together, right? And we're gonna stitch the, the um, circle all around, leaving a gap open so that you can stuff it. So now you can see here that I've simply stitched the circle around, leaving a gap open here, okay? So now I'm going to clip again around the perimeter of that. Flipping around just to make sure it's nice and um, rounded when we flip it right side out. Now I'm gonna, I'm not going to clip around the open. All right, so I've made clips all the way around here. You can see. All right, so now I'm gonna turn it right side out at the opening here. Now it's time to get your stuffing. When you're stuffing this, you could use a variety of things. And I think I meant basically you could use um, fabric you know, just scraps, but make sure when you do cut them into small pieces, kind of like shredding them in a way and then stuff them inside. And you could use um, cat litter, you could use little ball bearings, you could use so many things, so many things, um, beans, rice, that sort of thing. Okay. Now, if you decide to use beans or rice, you want to make sure that you um, limit the, uh, the amount of steam. You don't want to cook it. Okay. So let me just show you what I'm going to do because I'm going to stuff mine with rice. You know, you can stuff it with whatever you want to stuff it with. I'm going to do it with rice. And I'm gonna stuff it as full as I can get it, okay? Almost there. Okay, so it's nice and full. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, so now that we have filled up our lining, okay, so now what you wanna do is grab your needle and throw in there some whip stitches to close off that little area. Okay, so I'm tying a knot at one end. I'm actually using it so that there is just one thread that will be running through and I have the other side of the thread running free.
So now I'm going to stitch this in the same way I stitched the, um, the inside, right? So right sides together, right? So I've turned it so, let me see here. I've turned it so the right sides are together. And now I'm going to, um, I'm sorry, so the right side's out and now I'm gonna do right sides together. Okay. And this time I'm gonna leave a larger opening because I've got to fit this whole thing into it. So now I'm going to do the clips all, the, all around where I've stitched so far. Very good. Okay, so now we've made clips. You can see that. You can see there's some little clips going all the way around here. Okay, now I'm going to flip that right side out. And we're going to stuff this bad boy in here. So now we're simply going to stitch this portion close. And I'm going to pin along this time because I just wanted to get a nice clean finish. So I'm going to pin along the edges, folding in at the seam allowance. Once again, I'm going to use my hand needle. To finish off these edges, we are done with the sewing machine at this point. And hiding my stitches, so I'm hiding the stitches inside the fold. Double seam allowance. And interestingly enough, if I did the whip stitch here, it would be totally fine because the uh, the pile on this fabric is so plush that it hides the stitches. Okay, this is my original. And now this is the one we just created right here. You can actually, you know, pass the iron over it, um, or flatten it out a little bit. That's, that's the one we did today. Very cool, right? I hope that you find this a meaningful, useful project. Again, if there are things that you would like to see me do on the channel, I'm happy to oblige. Just let me know in the chat and in the comments, and I would love to hear from you. Of course, remember to create something beautiful. I'm out. Peace.